Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Big Blue Offensive Podcast with Mike Trainer, Jay Jules, and John Depot. Hey, what's up, Giants fam? Welcome to the BBO NYG podcast. I'm Mike. That's Jules. Uh, John is not with us right now. He might hop on a little bit, so stay tuned for him to see if he makes that appearance. But Jules, it's guest season, man. We have another guest lined up today, man. Who, who is it? Well, that's my man, Tommy, from uh, formerly from Giants Rush Up, but he'll, he'll let you know that you know, he's, he's kind of broken off and got his whole new show on. But Tommy, man, thank you for coming on the show. We appreciate having you on. Fellas, thank you so much for having me on. Big fan of the show. Big fan of all you guys. You know, you do it the right way. Always on point with your information. Always got the content coming. Uh, I love to work with other content creators. Uh, You know, it's a passion of mine. You know, no matter if you have 100 followers or 100,000, like, we're all preaching the same thing. We're all trying to get the Giants to get some wins. Um, Like you said, I was with Giants Rush. I was with them for a few months. Uh, Big shout out to them. I learned a lot, you know, with them. I've only really been doing the content creation for about a year now. Always been a lifelong diehard Giants fan, but really started to get into it the last year. Um, And those guys over there, Craig, really helped me get a platform to, you know, write articles, do podcasts, uh, you know, make some really good relationships with other people. So I got nothing but love for them. Um, But I am starting my solo gig pretty soon. Just working out the final details right now. Um, It's going to be really exciting. I got some fun stuff coming up, hoping to get it done right as soon as training camp starts or gets underway. And I'd love to have you guys on my show as well. Absolutely, oh, yeah. man. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, man. Good luck with that. Yo, yeah, as soon right. as you start getting things up, let us know, man. We'll, uh, Absolutely. we'll definitely give you some shout outs and everything. So there, there was no there was no bad blood when you leave in Giants Rush, right? That's what the people want to know. <laughs> no, no bad blood at all. One, no, one no. day, Jules is going to leave me, and then and we're going to have bad blood, man. I'm telling you. He's going to go listen, out on his listen. own. <laughs> the, the, the Giants content creating game can be a shady one sometimes, right? Everybody's competitive. Everybody wants to be the best. Everybody wants to get, you know, the most content out, most subscribers, but nothing for love for Craig. Craig runs the Giants rush. Uh, he gave me the opportunity, man. He was the first bigger account that said, hey, I'm recognizing what you're doing. I want to get you out on a bigger platform. Uh, but while doing it, I said to myself, you know what? I am putting in a lot of work. Uh, let me try to give this a roll myself and see how it works. Um, so that's where I'm at with it. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, listen, listen, that's kind of similar to how Mike and I kind of came, you know, started out with this whole idea with, 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 the, with the big blue offensive. Yep. You know, we literally were with all the network for a little bit that kind of fell apart. And a lot of people were just like, hey, man, you guys doing a good job. Just do it on your own. And we figured out little things here and there. We're still learning, you know, you know doing it now. Of and course. It's, it's, I see you guys didn't fun, really, right? uh, at the end of the day. I see you guys really didn't like uh, my uh, greatest uh, giant wide receiver of all time poll I ran. <laughs> I, I, I know you spelled Who's Odell Beckham yeah, Jr. Who's... wrong. You spelled his name wrong. His, his name is Toomer. <laughs> Toomer <laughs> is the best guy. You know what's crazy? You know, it's crazy. I had the idea to do the polls. Obviously, there's not a lot of new stuff going on, but but it really is unbelievable that the recency bias that there is on Twitter. And we all know, listen, Twitter's a young man's game, right? You know, a lot of young kids are there. I have a lot of young followers on there. But it's really crazy when you think about it. Even like, uh, for instance, I did the offensive lineman, greatest offensive lineman poll. And you had uh, Rosie Brown on there who, you know, I was like eight or nine Pro Bowls, all pro teams. And Chris Snee just wiped the floor with him. Wasn't he? <laughs> now you're making me feel old. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I'm with you, brother. <laughs> I want Mark Favaro so back at tight end. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. But- it was fun. Yeah, that's good stuff. So, Tom, we, we always want to hear, like, a fresh take, right? Because, you know, we, we get so so wound up in our opinions at times that, like, you know, it almost sounds like we're beating a dead horse, right? Of course. So, starting from the table hire to, to the draft to OTAs, what's been your real takes on, on how this Giants team is turning out this offseason? Yeah, so I'll start. I think, uh, I think the proper thing to do is start from the last six games of the season last year. All right. Uh, probably the most brutal stretch of football you could ever imagine – Right. You know, I, I don't know if you guys are pro Jones on here or not, but I am. <laughs> and and that's, like, not, yeah. that's not even that me. I, I, I am on the board with Jones. I, I 
think he could turn things around, but I'm just not. I'm like sort of on the fence a little bit with him. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm also going to ask because I, I everybody knows what mine is, but I just love repeating it and only because he came at me. But I am going to ask you to do one bold prediction from this New York Giants team. Absolutely. Mine, just to kind of give an idea, is that Saquon Barkley will not be a Giant next year. But anyway, so that, that's mine, all right? Okay. It, it drives him crazy because his dog is named after Barkley. So. Oh, man, <laughs> Very nice. true. Yeah. You can get shot at the dog, Mike. Yeah. I'm a diehard, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, you know, you go back to those last six games, um, it sucked because we had really good vibes with Judge, right? The first year, we go 6-10. and 10, We have the big win against the Seahawks on the road. You know, everybody's running laps in the parking lot. You know, the beat writers are running laps. Everything's looking great. And you fast forward to those last six games and the wheels fell off, right? Non-competitive, barely could complete a pass. Judge is having meltdowns in the media, calling other head coaches out, other franchises. You know, I think that was the epitome of, hey, listen, yeah, we just restarted this two years ago. We're going to restart it again. So we go into the GM head coach search. My opinion, we got both our top choices, right? We got Dayball, uh, offensive coordinator from Buffalo, the second overall offense in the NFL last season, you know, went toe to toe with the Chiefs in that game, uh, could have made it to the Super Bowl, just fell short. That was a score right there with Brian. Uh, we got Joe Shane, right? One of the best young minds out there. Um, you know, he was, uh, you know, uh, I would say probably the catalyst in a lot of those personnel decisions in Buffalo. So in my opinion, those two were home runs. Plus they work together. They have the aviance together. They have the chemistry. Each one knows what to look for from each other. You know, how, how many years have been doing this broken system, right? Where we get rid of the GM and, and, and we, and we keep the head coach, we get rid of the, the head coach. We, we, we keep, you know, just like mismatching. Everybody has to be on the same page. And I think that's where we screwed up this rebuild, you know, rebuild version, you know, 2.8 or whatever it was. We screwed it up because we were mismatching. So in my opinion, that was two home runs right off the bat. That set everything else into play. So you get to April, it's draft time. What are the New York Giants' two biggest needs going into the draft, right? Offensive line and edge rusher, in my opinion, right? Yep, yep definitely. And we get the two best players, in my opinion, on the board. I mean, yeah, you know, you could make a case uh, that Tibbs was in edge number one. Uh, you know, you can go for Hutchinson. You can go for Walker, wherever you want to go for. Tibbs was my number one. So that was a score for me. And I don't want to hear anything about an attitude or work ethic. Let's let the kid get in there, put his hand in the dirt, play some football. That was a win at number five. And then at number seven, you know, thanks to some uh, precarious drafting before us, we get our tackle, our, 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 our uh, you know, bookend, our right tackle in, in Evan Neal. Versatile lineman, played all over the line at Alabama, strong, physical, smart kid, um, never really injured. So we hit the home run right there with the two picks. Obviously, you know, you don't win games in April, so that's yet to be seen. But all of a sudden you turn around, you got a new GM, you got a new head coach, you got a bookend tackle, you got a premier edge rusher uh, to line up along Oja Larry and, and Leonard Williams uh, and Dexter Lawrence. So leading up to that point, I mean, could you really ask for anything better at this point? So you're saying, no, I mean, listen, that, Jill, okay. so you're saying those last six games, right? It was kind of a blessing in disguise, if you think about it, because we got five and seven and now it's like. It's like almost like an easy rebuild, but living that nightmare was pretty fucking sickening. I oh, give you dude, that. Oh, dude, the quarterback sneaks, dude, on our own oh, goal line. That was That's hilarious. Damn, I, laughed. I honestly thought it was a joke. Like I thought I was watching something from like practice <laughs> or like like yeah, from yeah. some shit we didn't know about. I'm like, it's when you right, hit so the wrong button. The game. <laughs> I, I, when you're playing Madden and fucking on, online, you hit the wrong button. You're like, what I just punt on first? <laughs> yeah, down yeah, my yeah. Like, what is this? You know what I'm like, come on. Like, there's no <laughs> way. Right. Wait, they're doing this a second time? Yeah, no. I, Look, if, if anything got Judge fired, that did not help his case at all, all right? Like, nope. you know, it was definitely that. But uh, just going back to the draft, I mean, if you ever see my reaction, I'm surprised we didn't just put it out a little bit more on the on the before mentioned Twitter. But when we when we were selected five, I'm screaming into the microphone because we did it live, and I'm telling him, I was like, we have to go Thibs here. We have to fucking go Thibs here. He is the best defensive brusher on the board right now. People can argue all day long that he could have been number one. Maybe it was these little like that were going Halfway around. Halfway through the college year, he was. If you remember, yeah. through the college football season, he was a perennial number one overall yeah. pick. You know how things go. Right. I mean, listen, going up until like, I want to say like March, it was like between him and Hutch that we were going one and one. And all of a sudden, like Absolutely. coming like end of March, early April, he starts falling. And, and it was saying that we might even have gotten him at seven. 
But the way it was set up and the way that the corners went, the two corners went early and not one tackle was taken. I was like, it makes zero sense to take our tackle right now. Unless you got one of those guys as a fucking standout where this guy can't miss. There is absolutely no reason why you cannot, you know, you take that tackle. You don't, you go with the defensive player because if not, Carolina was snatching him up. To me, I don't, there's no doubt in my mind. So yes, we lost Icky, but we got Neil. Which, okay, you know, once again, you're still arguing that this could have been the best tackle in this year's draft. So, I mean, it just wins across the board. Just getting into that second round, though, I have to admit, I was losing my mind when we kept trading back. Yeah. And then we take this yeah. young, speedy Wendell Robinson. And I have jumped on Team Robinson because I am anti-Team Tony. So, therefore, I have to stand behind Robinson this year. But right. I don't know how much I can really stand behind it. What are you, some of your thoughts on that, pick? Yeah, you know, I'm not going to lie. You know, when you tweet things, it lives forever, right? So, you know, my first response was who? (laughs) (laughs) And fellas, listen, I did a lot of draft research. I dug in. You know, I was doing two player profiles a day. I know I knew of one that Robinson. I had him as a a third, maybe fourth round pick on my board, but I'm not the expert. And I think what we've seen with that pick was, one, as much as we – you know, no matter who, what content you create, or even some of the, you know, uh, Mike Mayock and, and Mel Kuyper, they were wrong too, because we don't know, one, these teams' boards, and we don't know, two, who the GM's looking for. Obviously, um, Joe Shane had a specific type of player in mind. He took players that were versatile, had exquisite physical traits. Um, you know, Robinson, yeah, he's small. He's on the small side. Quick, shifty, uh, could play running back, um, you know, could play the slot, had some X movement at, at, at uh, Kentucky. So they had a certain vision in mind and I wasn't happy with the pick when it happened. Uh, you know, I had, you know, I wanted secondary, you know, I, you know I, there was a couple of good players still on the board. You know, our secondary is probably the biggest issue yeah. right now when you look at the overall team. So I really wanted secondary. I liked the kid, uh, Boot Jr. at a Clemson at cornerback. I really liked him. So that was tough. But when I went back the next day and I said, all right, Tommy, you know, Pull your pants up. You're going to have to stand behind this if you don't like the pick and you don't like the player. And I got to tell you, man, I was really impressed by him. The kid had 19 uh, reps in the bench press for his size, just unheard of strength. And you see it on the field. There's several highlights where he's just a ping pong ball. He's getting the linebackers dragging him. The corner's coming. He's darting out. He's stiff arming guys. So really, really physically for for his size, packs a wallop in there. Um, So while I wasn't happy with it then, I think it's a good pick now especially when you consider how often injured our receivers are, right? I mean, look at, look at mini camp. I mean, this oh, guy's boy. in a red shirt. This guy's in a red shirt. That guy's riding the bike over there. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, so I think, you know, when looking at it from that point of view, I like to pick a little bit more. I mean, the only thing I'm nervous, not nervous about, but I, I was kind of kicking myself was when you were going for that kind of player fit, I thought maybe Sky Moore that ended up with the Kansas City Chiefs might have been a little bit better of a pick. I definitely had him higher on the board than than Wendell. So that's my biggest concern there because, all right, if we were committed to going wide receiver there in the second round, I just hope it doesn't come back to bite us with with that missing out on him because you know that any real people that are involved with this football team and this and really into it will be able to come pull that thing. It's not these, these like haters, which we'll get into again later, but uh, they, they come at you like where, you know, all oh, the giants could regret not dr- drafted Justin Fields. And it's like, yo, there was three other quarterbacks taken before him. Like wh- who are we regretting? You know, like, so it's just that dumb shit, but like this, that particular one there though, with, with Sky Moore and, and, and Wendell is going to be something that's just going to be kind of hanging over. I, I do see, though, because like after you said, I calmed down and, you know, put, build my pants up and really kind of absorb this, uh, this this pick. You know what? Once you see some of the stuff he did in, in college, knowing that he was actually a running back first and yep. then converted to receiver. Uh, you know, I, I almost see. And for the, for the young guys that don't know, you know, I say it all the time on the channel. I'm like, you know, watch some YouTube. You can pull up some old things. He kind of reminds me of a Dave Meggett. You know, where, where just point. a modern age Dave Meggett, where it's like, look, you know, he's I definitely could see him spelling Barkley on a couple of occasions or even having both of them on the field at the same time. I mean, you know, if, if all guys are healthy and you could be able to put Tony on one side, him on another and Barkley in the backfield, that's a lot of speed and talent you got on that on that team. And that's yeah. not even considering Galladay or Shepard. So it does create a lot of mismatches, hopefully. And like you mentioned, just hopefully all these guys can stay healthy, man. Oh God. <laughs> and Jason, what's yeah. what's the key? What's the key to the season, right? We got to see what number eight right here got. So I'm not going to be mad at getting number eight a weapon, uh, another weapon in the draft. So also when I looked at it like that, I felt a little bit better. Um, 
but we'll see. Listen, there's, there's questions there with, with, with Wandell. Catch radius, small arms, right? Um, short. So there's questions, there's concerns, um, but we'll see. You know, we won't we won't know, uh, um, you know, until come September. It's funny that you just mentioned Jones. Did you guys see uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick coming out today and basically yeah. saying that he thinks that Dable and Kafka are going to actually get this guy on the right track? Ryan's very smart. Be his best season. He's so, a very smart man. That Ryan <laughs> Harvard grad. Was it Harvard or Princeton? Harvard. I think it was Harvard. Harvard yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, I believe it's Harvard. I but was that's not from too. Harvard, so. <laughs> yeah, likewise. I was community college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> WCC. <laughs> Two Chester, years. baby. <laughs> uh, uh, Shit. But, yeah, honestly, I just threw me for a second there. But so what would you say now, here, here's a good one. And this is one where I know Mike's going to kind of like twist in his seat a little bit here. Now, you see how immediately you have Fitzpatrick saying that he's going to get fixed by both Dable and, and, and Kafka. But at the end of the day, does it lie on the coaches that turn these guys around? Or is it the GM who drafted them should get more of this credit? Maybe he didn't have such a bad draft. Yeah, it's a great question. You know, um, it's like what came first, the chicken or the egg, right? Yep. My opinion, <laughs> yep. my opinion, the GM's job to get a guy in here that, you know, hasn't been hurt his whole college career, a guy that does display the physical traits, strong, fast, speedy, good character kids, right? Uh, kids that you're not going to worry, you're going to go AWOL, are not going to want to play, are going to demand a new contract after a couple hundred yard games. It's the GM's job to get the player that is coachable, that can function in a system, right? You see so many of these players nowadays where they have one good season and it's like, rip up the contract, trade me. I don't want to do this stuff. Those That hurts teams, no matter how talented the player is. So I think it's the GM's job to get a good kid in there, a coachable kid, a trainable kid, and then it's up to the, to, to the head coach to get it out of them, right? To push those buttons. You know, what motivates you, player, right? Is it money? Is it fame? Um, is it being the best player on your team? Is it being the best player in the NFL? What motivates you and how can I push your buttons to get you to the best version of you? And, and that's why I think it's so critical. And, and I'm happy that we got a GM and a head coach on the same page because they're looking through the same lens. I mean, you know, we seen them at the combine and these guys were like, you know, brothers out there, like, you know, high fiving, hugging each other. Um, so I think that's important, but, but to circle back, you know, it's two pieces of the puzzle and the GM and head coach got to be in tune there. Now you want up a good point. You know, I didn't even like look at it that way. This is the first time in probably at least the last 10, 15 years where we literally have a GM that brought in his guy, from day one, as far as coaches are concerned. So, you know, you, like you mentioned, like we both hit a home run, we're getting both Dable and, and, Shane, and Shane in here. So obviously Shane had a few guys in his mind, you know, whether or not, you know, that whole thing that had happened with Flores and like was just a bunch of hot air bullshit, who cares? But the main point is, is that you're right. This is the first time these guys have worked together. They know each other. They know what, what, what each other's visions are. And, and it's finally going to be sort of that, that uh, you know, togetherness that maybe that this team has been lacking over the last few years. Well, 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 if say this, if Jones does like make an impact and have a great year and Barkley makes a great year, <laughs> doesn't Dave Gettleman get a little bit of credit for that? Do people backtrack <laughs> oh, their words and be like, you know what, maybe we were wrong. He just needed like, you know, an <laughs> offensive line. I'll knock Dave Gettleman for not having an offensive line. I'll, I'll knock him for that. But, I tell you, like these pieces are just starting to look better and better every day. Every quote I read, every video I see, every practice, like it's it's making me think like he had his good moments. You're not wrong, Mikey. I'll tell you that. And it's and it's not going to be popular out there when people hear this. But we got Andrew Thomas from Dave Gettleman. Right. You know, depending on Jones and Barkley. And, and I think both are going to have breakout years this year. I mean, so. If they stay healthy, knock on wood. Right. Please. Those two guys hit it. You hit it right on the park, Mikey. If those two guys perform. All of a sudden we got a quarterback, franchise quarterback, stud running back, franchise left tackle. We got Xavier McKinney, stud safety. All came from Gettleman. Now he right. had a lot more misses than hits. You know, he destroyed the cap going all in, you know, this year. Um, so he had more bad than good. But if you're going to knock the guy for, you know, drafting a bust and, you know, drafting a Matt Pert or someone like that, you got to give him his credit for drafting studs, right? I mean, it's that, that's not fair. Yeah. I mean, listen, you could add old Jalari to that list. Old we'll Jalari, see, right. We'll, we'll see what Kadarius Tony does this year if, if he's healthy. Absolutely. And he's the one that traded back. And us getting that Bears pick landed us that's one of the other point. two guys. So 
Yeah, there were That's a lot a of good. And, and yes, he did. You know what else? He just did such boneheaded stuff where when it came to signing these veteran players, he just oversigned guys and gave guys too much yeah. money. Didn't yeah. manage that part of it right. So, yeah, maybe he saw talent through the draft and was pretty good at that. But it was the other half of the GM work that kind of like really sent this shit down the stream for him. That, that didn't His want personality to too, man. His personality was awful for the New York market, dude. He just, you know, even if things worked out a little better, and he just was burying himself, the smartest guy in the room, you know, treating <laughs> like crap. I don't know if we could curse on here, you know, treating, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> treating people like shit in, in the front office, you know, treating yeah. trainers like shit, this one like shit. Listen, you put yourself at, at an unfair advantage when you treat people like that and you have a personality like that. Um, and that's why I love Brian Dayball when, in his interviews. If you watch Brian's interviews, he doesn't give the media anything, but he gives them nothing nicely. Right. So when he's getting, <laughs> he's all smiles and happy and thank you, please. I appreciate it. You know, you guys are awesome, but you're getting nothing from me. Whereas <laughs> you're going to get nothing and you're going to like it because I don't want to give you nothing. I think he screwed himself with his personality in New York, too. Now, you're right. And, and yeah, listen, yeah. that goes a long way. I mean, look, I mean, I think he was like Dable's like one of his first like interviews. Right. right as soon as becoming the head coach. And he was already calling out beat writers for coming in late and shit. Like Absolutely. he just owned the room, man. It was way different. You didn't see this with McAdoo or Shermer or any of these guys. They didn't own that room. They didn't come in to the big, one of the biggest media markets in the entire planet. And all of a sudden start calling out beat writers for walking in right. on them late, you know, <laughs> like that says something for a guy. It just does. We got some, uh, some interesting beat writers too. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> I'm not going to name no names because we got some oh. good ones. Um, well, don't worry, I, I'll shout one out later. I promise. He might, he might have one for the haters. <laughs> and it might actually be one on your list, so it'll be all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but listen, Tom, get into OTAs, man. What's some of the biggest takeaways you had from the OTA so far? Yeah, so, um, you know, I'll start with the positive. You know, whenever you change, whenever you change leadership, you're always going to hear, oh, it's such a different environment now. It's such a different atmosphere we're so happy. We're running and we're picking roses out of the ground. And <laughs> you're always going to hear that. But, you know, I, I've been a Giants fan, you know, 30 years almost. And it just seems different when you hear the players talk. You know, I was listening to the receiver interviews that came out today. And, you know, with Shepard, it was Shepard, uh, it was Tony, it was Robinson. And it just felt different the way they spoke. Uh, even when you see some of that footage out there, you know, you know, Dayball's playing around with the players, having fun, poking at them. Listen, you know, I don't want to speak too much about the prior prior leadership we had here, but it was very stiff. It was very uppity. It was very uptight. Uh, you know, guys were getting worn into the ground under that style of, of uh, coaching from Judge. Um, DG, you know, Gettleman was hardly there. You know, respect to him. He did have a bout, you know, with cancer. Uh, I'm glad he's making it through. So respect. I know that's difficult to, you know, go through that and be around a team 24-7. Yeah. Uh, but that was the first thing I noticed in OTAs. Kind of like that uh, chokehold was lifted from the team a little bit. Um, second thing I noticed was, unfortunately, the injury still. And, you know, I'm one of those guys, and I, I hope I don't sound ignorant, ignorant here. I don't know how guys can have six months off and come back injured still. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, like, it's crazy to me. So my thing is this, Mikey, I think this, I think they're just taking it easy. I think they're saying, you know what? Tony was injured off and on last year. Galladay was injured off and on. We're not even messing around. Let's do that. Mini camp. We're not even touching it. Put your red jersey on, run a couple routes, you know, have some fun on the sidelines. I don't think these guys are actually really physically injured. Maybe Andrew Thomas is still recovering from the ankle surgery. Um, but it baby. feel good when you see that, right, from a team that has led the league in injuries or, or top two the last four or five years running. I think it's their major concern is the health of this team. You're right. I think that's exactly why they're doing They're babying these guys. And rightfully so, man. We don't want to see – like all these soft tissue injuries that we just got clobbered with. Everybody's blaming Matt Life, but yeah, it was rampant around the league, man. Oh, yeah. You know, it was just crazy, but nothing worse than us. I've, like, I've never seen anything like it where practically an entire offense just dropped dead of injuries and people still mad at Judge making a quarterback sneak. I probably would have quarterback sneaked it too on third down, <laughs> fourth down, you know, rethinking about it. Like, shit, it was, it was pretty bad, but I don't know. I'm 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 with you though. I'm excited about the direction this team's going. I'm I'm excited to see what they're gonna do. Listen, and, and you you definitely brought up something there too. Where they're being smart with some of these things. I mean, like if you take Bibbs for example, he all of a sudden went out with this undisclosed injury, and it, it, to me, it's precaution. You got Absolutely. the number five overall pick right there. You know, they get hurt. 
Where did these guys get yeah. hurt? You know, like, if his leg is sore, they're like, bro, take the day off or take the week yeah. off. You're good. Like, that's it. You know what I mean? Because of what I will saying. say this, guys. <laughs> if these guys roll into training camp, you know, come July 19th and July 26th in red jerseys, I'm going to be worried. And then bigger problems. Yeah. For me. So right now, I don't care. You know, they had their fun. You know, mini camp's over. OTAs are over. But July 19th, the rookies report. July 26th, the vets report. I don't want to see no red jerseys, especially on our starters. That's the way. That's a month away. And especially with the wide receiver room, it's like it, it's become so frustrating, at least for me, from my perspective, that I can't even talk shit. And I have to sit back and see guys like Terry McLaurin being one of the best in the NFC East. And I'm like, he's good, he ain't even that good. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? It's like, it, 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 like look, C.D. Lamb, fine. I think C.D. Lamb is a phenomenal wide receiver. It's Absolutely. hard to argue that. But, like, if you're going to start trying to say that Michael Gallup might be better than any of our receivers on our team, and it's like you're talking yeah. shit, but you're talking shit for a reason. No, <laughs> no, 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 no wide receiver caught a TD last year, right? So, like, you know. I know, dude. Ridiculous. You can't argue with him right now. It yeah, sucks. it's oh, hard, man. man. That's not to say. <laughs> like, that that's shit's got to be crazy, bro. Like, like I got to hear – we got to hear from one of our Washington fans – that Gonna Curtis Samuel and Johan Dotson and fucking Terry McCord <laughs> might be a better wide receiver crew than us. Get yeah. out of here, dude. Hey, right. You AJ know you're Brown, full of shit. AJ Brown and, fucking, <laughs> and all of a sudden the Eagles have the best in the fucking league. Like, come on, man. It's just killing me inside. <laughs> and a lot of it has to do with the fucking injuries. Because that's what I was saying <laughs> earlier. Yo, it's going to be interesting to see both Tony and Robinson on the field at the same time. And yes, and then and then we have we have the tight ends now, like that, that, that are starting to step up there. So yeah, it's just a lot of different things going on, man. You know, and, and it'd be nice to see everything healthy for at least more than one fucking game this year. Hopefully, Barkley need it. Yeah. I yeah. mean, Barkley listen, catching balls at the backfield, Barkley running out, you know, routes, not just catching screens. He's actually lining up as a wide receiver. Like, what if you throw Barkley, Tony, the Rook, Shepard? Like, how do you guard that? Like, if we got, if he, this kid got protection, I just don't see it. I don't see how you could just make bad throws with these guys are going to be wide open. I could see it. Yeah, it's funny you say that too, Mike. Again, going back to those interviews I was listening to right before I jumped on, you know, they were talking to Tony and they were like, hey, you know, how, you know, how's the alignments looking? <clears throat> are they moving people around in different spots? And he goes, you know, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not giving you any of that, but you're going to see something out there. You're going to see something crazy. Like we're going to be moving around because you got, I mean, just look at it. You got, you know, Tony can catch the ball, can throw the ball, can run the ball. Tony had a couple of completions last season. You know, you got uh, Robinson can catch the ball, can run the ball. Um, you know, you got Daniel Jones who could run the ball, though. You know, I probably want to see him start doing a little bit of less of putting himself in harm's way. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Even though it's, you know, it sucks because that's kind of what's separating him from what other mediocre quarterbacks out there is that the kid can dash 86 yards, you know, up the sideline like that. Um, but yeah, learn gonna- how to slide. Just learn how to slide. He don't slide feet first ever. And then he just said a couple of weeks ago, uh, I haven't worked with any baseball coaches or trainers on how to slide. Please, Daniel, can slide. <laughs> slide. You got a huge, the kid is 6'5. He's got a huge target on his frame. Get down. You know, the, the previous coaching staff is gone with their ridiculous play calls. We're going to run a read option directly into a linebacker, a cornerback, and a safe. <laughs> and the kid it hurts his neck, hurt his neck in Philly. And, you know, it sucks because I, I always talk about this. The best game last season was the Saints games. Would you would you guys agree? 100%. The next game was the Dallas game, guys. I mean, Jones gets the concussion on the goal line, you know, wobbles off the field. Barkley, ste- freak injury, steps on the cornerback's ankle, uh, foot, I'm sorry, almost breaks his ankle off the bone, and that was it. The season was over. We had right there. The- First the Saints, and then it just – it was like it was like torment for Giants fans. Like, all right, this is what you guys could do. You beat the Saints on the road. Barkley's getting a 45-yard touchdown catch up the sideline. Barkley's scoring the game-winning touchdown. Jones looks sharp. You know, Galladay's hitting his mini post routes that, that seem to be successful. Yeah. For and then just like that, two quarters, that's, it was all gone. That's when I knew, Tommy. I was like, this season is fucking over with, man. We cannot have anything nice. When those fucking two went down, Jules is still on mute. You got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I know, I know. You know, Taking listen, it. you know, being over here in Brooklyn and shit like that, there's like a lot of background noise Brooklyn? that was cut. Yeah, yeah, I'm in Brooklyn. Get out right of here. Now. Don't yeah, born man. and raised in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 saw him in, 
I'm in Sunset Park, but I, but I just uh, moving over to Bay Ridge in, in July. So you know the area. That's I'm, awesome. My mother still yeah. lives out there in Bensonhurst, right? Oh, nice. Back. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. See, so, yeah, I'm like right there pretty much. <laughs> I grew up, I lived more towards Coney Island. I went to Lincoln High, High School uh, right after Stephon Marbury left. Uh, he was there the year before. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, you know, funny yeah. story. Stephon would come back with his Bentley and just hand kids money in front of the school. Uh, he was a good dude. I know wow. he had a bit of a has a little bit of a weird reputation in the media and his legacy, but you know, Stefan Marbury was an awesome dude, man. Just all, you know, off track a little bit there. No, oh, that's yeah. cool as shit. Yeah, I, seriously. He, he worked out of my gym quite a few times in like White Plains when he was oh, with the real? Knicks. And um, like he yeah, worked out. He was cool, cool to talk to, you know. Good dude, man. Yeah, good real dude. good dude. But yeah, Brooklyn's finest, baby. Always representing Brooklyn out here. I mean, listen, I gotta admit, I yeah, grew up in, in, in the in Yonkers in the Bronx, but you know, I'm out here in Brooklyn now. <laughs> Seems like you you've been part of the five boroughs, Jules. Like, since yeah, I yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. You know I mean? I've pretty much lived in all the boroughs, so you know, <laughs> except for Staten Island. I don't even know how that shit's considered a borough, right? No offense to anybody uh, yeah, in Staten no. Island. But I know you guys hear that shit all the time. So whatever. that's like the stepbrother of the five borough, four borough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. It's like adopted. <laughs> Just get Giant Stadium moved into New York so we don't oh, have please, to read that. Uh, right in midtown Do <laughs> soon the stadium. In all honesty, and I understand that, you know, if, if anybody that's into the World Cup, when the new one, when the next one's coming rolling around, they're going to have some games at MetLife. I don't know why I hate that stadium. I like, I just I do, hate that man. stadium. You know, the stadium Everybody sucks, does. man. Ever since they took the Giants' name off of it, that shit's been terrible. I don't know why they would do it. It looks like a big can of tuna fish when you look at it from the side. <laughs> Just like a stacked can of tuna, dude. You know, and then you look at some of these other stadiums, like like Vegas is new one. Oh my god, one out in LA, and it's like, yo, those are stadiums I want to go to, man. I just fucking melt oh, my yeah. shit. Like this is ridiculous. The Raiders one got like a strip club inside the fucking stadium, from what I yeah, know. <laughs> going on over there, man. Yo, know, like, like, dude, like that's like that's how you want to party. You know what I mean? Pull oh, yeah, up and, and like on the fifty yard line and something. That should be great. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so any any players that you didn't expect throughout this whole like oh you know mini camps OTAs all that kind of stuff anybody stand out to you that you were like oh wow I wasn't expecting this guy and he's been kind of stepping up from everything I've been reading and hearing probably outside. um yeah definitely um you know you know when you look at the rookies uh you did hear a lot about Robinson you know his name was thrown out a lot that he looked great uh, but not a surprise you know second round pick. Um, I would probably say, you know, Daniel Bellinger, the tight end. Um, I think we're in, everybody's in for a surprise with, uh, I call him Belly. My nickname for him is Belly. I think I for a little surprise with this kid, because if you go back and you look at his numbers and uh, I watched some in-depth film on him, his average depth of reception was four yards. So they never even tried to use the kid deep. They were like, you're going to block, you're going to catch a quick slant, you're going to catch a quick dig, and you're going to go right back to blocking. A uh, tough kid. Uh, we actually interviewed him on Giants Rush when I was over there. His father is an amazing guy. Um, great family. I think we're going to be in for a surprise. And so far, all the all the talk I've been hearing out of mini camp and from some of my friends close to, to, to the camp is that he looks the part, man. He's out there. He's smart. You know, first one in, last one out. Um, he's at the tight end university thing they got running right now where it's like, uh, you know, George Kittle, Travis Kelce, they're schooling a bunch of players out there. So he's doing that extra, you know, he didn't say, okay, mini camp's done. I'll see you when training camp starts. No, he went from, you know, OTAs, mini camp right into that tight end you. So uh, I think he's going to be someone that's going to surprise a lot of people. And listen, isn't there some crazy stats too that he like never dropped the pass? And he's like, oh, he's a career or some shit like that. But it's insane. <laughs> Yo, imagine imagine going through your whole, your whole collegiate career. You didn't drop a pass? Like, uh, you're right. I mean, look. He, he That's is on definitely... top of my resume if I did that shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's number one, boy. <laughs> Big, bold letters. <laughs> Never drop the pass, period. Yeah. You know? And then, and then what do you got to do? Like, your first NFL game, you got to drop a pass. Oh, just, you just to, to get yeah. to break that shit out. Like, way. Even right. if you do it on purpose, just throw it down or something. <laughs> I dropped two, just to be sure. I'm like, I'm yeah. dropping my first. <laughs> you need to get that shit out of the way real quick. Because <laughs> that's all you need is for this dude. Could you imagine he starts the season off this year, and, like, in four games, he's, like, caught, like, I don't know, let's say 20 passes, and he hasn't dropped shit yet. He's, like, making one on catches. Like, he's going to be all over fucking New York. Like, he'll Absolutely. be on the back of every newspaper and everything. He'll be, like... They'll be like Odell who? They'll be like, who's yeah. this? New, oh, that'll be great. Dude, new- Jules, that'll be so great if that happened, man. Oh, God, I would love that. <laughs> oh, we need that's- a good tight end, man. We need a we need a good, a real good tight end around these parts, man. We really do. Yeah, for real. I mean, and listen, one other name, too, 
that you, that uh, that no one's really trying to talk too too much about was that was mentioned quite a bit is McKinney. Apparently McKinney is really taking this whole wing defense, and he is like you you saw the transition last year where he definitely became like that player towards the second half of the season. And now it's like, now he's going to step up where you may start hearing this guy's name as being one of the best safeties in the league, let alone him just taking that next step with the giants. There's going to be, to me, that's still where the weakness is for us is our secondary. Hopefully right. with, with, with old Jolari and Thibs now and, and, and freeing up some of that middle there, hopefully we're going to put a little bit more pressure on the quarterback. And especially with the way Wink likes to mix it on and does a lot of blitzing and all this kind of stuff. Hopefully they'll take that pressure off the secondary a little bit, because to me that that's just something that stands out a little bit that if, if we, if I could like go back and like improve one thing going into this year, it would definitely be that secondary. Yo, McKinney got a nice head on his shoulders, man. Like he seems like mature. The dude got yeah, married. Man. I seen on like Twitter, he got married, like ain't he Absolutely. like 22 years old? Like shit. Like yeah. he's got, he's got yeah, me. He's by, like. Dude. He got me beat by 20 years. <laughs> this fucking guy is amazing. <laughs> so it looks like we got a good secondary to be a leader out there, you know? Uh, he's a good kid nice. on and off the field. You know, it was a 76 PFF rating. You know, whether you love or hate PFF ratings. I hate uh, it. Him at 70, not a fan, Mikey? I hate PFF. I, I think they're the worst. Well, I, think I, Drew, I actually put them on the haters list. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, no, they fucking, listen, they fucking suck. But it does give you a little bit of a, a, a glance at where the player is. Absolutely. All park, right? Yeah, so no doubt. 76 rating, which puts him kind of in that, almost towards that upper echelon of safeties. You know, center fielder, right? Smart, sideline to sideline. Uh, help gets, got, he helped guys get lined up last season when we had the injuries at linebacker when Blake went down. I love that kid, man. Between him, Thomas, and um, Aziz, I mean, those are my three money money players right now. I mean, listen, to, you know, truth be told, like the last, the last two, two days of second, uh, the last two years of second rounds, those were the guys that I was screaming nice. on top of the soul box for. When I saw old Jalari slipping as much as he did, when I saw McKinney and I get taken in the first round that, that, that year, I was like, that was crazy. What? I was like, oh, that guy was supposed to be off the board in their first 20 picks. I was like, are Absolutely. you kidding me? He's fucking sitting there round two. It's a no brainer, you know? Same so, with Aziz. A lot yeah. of them had us taking Aziz in the first round that a lot of mocks had us taking Aziz first round. Yeah. And then they'd be able to trade back and get him. So, I mean, there's a lot of guys to be excited about. I just, you know, like I said, to, to really, you know, be on that next echelon for this team. I still think we need a little work with the secondary the line. Yeah. The line is going to be suspect. We might still need another lineman or two here, but that's what I'm hoping that this season really puts forth is that now you could see that it's okay. It's like one or two things that are missing now, maybe three. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and, and like, like, all right, we get these three things fixed through draft and free agency, you know, in 2023 or whatever. Cool. We're on our way. Now we can start to compete for this division and start looking to make the playoffs. That's what I'm really hoping to get out of this year. You know, more so than like really putting a win total on it. Sure. Or I was just going to say that. Guys Look stay the healthy. They take to the next step and they're like, shit. You know, we really need that corner number two. We need another safety to complement with McKinney. Uh, you know, maybe we need like, uh, you know, another, you know, a center or something. Right. You know what I mean? Like, those little pieces there, and you're like, boom, we get that. All right, and we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be for real. We're, we're gonna stop being mentioned that that we're gonna compete for I this agree. division, you know, because it's driving me nuts. Like I cannot stand how much. Yes, the Eagles did pretty good. Yes, they got AJ Brown. Yes, they got a Smith, and it goes, but they still gotta have Hurts throw the ball. You know what I mean? And and it's to terrible, me, dude. come He's on, man. Like I, I, there's dude, no couldn't even beat. Listen, capacity. the Eagles fans want to talk shit about Jones, right? And listen. Jones has his issues, right? And it's a, and it's a results business. Um, your numbers speak for themselves. But when Jones and Hurts went head to head, and I know they're both on offense, we won that game. When 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 Jones was in there and he was healthy, we beat the Eagles and Hurts straight up. Uh, while we were struggling immensely, right? The guy could barely complete a pass in that game. He's terrible, though. I don't want to hear nothing about Hurts or the Eagles. I can't stand <laughs> <laughs> I can't That's stand all you. He's going to be on the same page with a lot of it. <laughs> Get me fired up. Hurts is so whack. That's what the whole point is, because – Cause we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into the next to one of our next segments that we like to do. It's called like the haters. The yes, haters. Sir, let's go. So, Woo. Mike, you want to take a quick commercial break first, and then uh... yes, absolutely. <laughs> let's take a quick commercial break uh, before we mention any older giants. Uh, you know what I mean? I think I mentioned Bavaro. I was gonna mention Phil Sims before, but I I backtracked. I lost it. I'm really showing my age in this podcast. But we'll be right back with some nominees for the Haters Club. We'll be right back on the BBO NYG podcast. 
All right, we are back on the BBO NYG podcast. I'm Mike. That Shul special guest Tommy is in the building. We're in the haters club portion of this segment, Jules. Welcome all you ignorant ass bitches, critics, complainers, disgruntled rappers, <laughs> and racists especially, to the ninth annual international player haters ball. Oh man, hey, 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 um, who has a nominee? Are we going to let our special guest nominee nominate somebody in the haters club? Absolutely. So let's just give a quick little rundown again for the haters club. In case you haven't heard it yet. We've done it for the last couple episodes, but you know, we're, we're going to make this thing a staple moving forward and especially when the season goes, it's all those guys that are pretty much on Twitter. It's going to be more of a shot on the side of, uh, of Twitter, but there are some times where people have come at us in other formats as well, but mainly in Twitter where the people just will say the dumbest things about this team. And it's all, oh, well, there are people who are allowed their opinion. Yeah, but when the opinion makes absolutely no sense, or it's an opinion that you just know is just straight up to either get a Giants fan riled up, or it's just fucking just bullshit. They just want to fucking, like, look, get themselves liked and have, like, a million different, like, hits from their, from their thing and have it retweeted. So we like to call those people out. Like, fuck that. <laughs> Why should you do that shit? Like, let me, let me burn her accounts. Have you seen? Where, like, you know, it's like, yeah, this dude <laughs> don't even have a real account up yet. He's got two <laughs> followers. It's like, yo, for real, you're on here talking shit because you just caught, like, a giant fucking group. <laughs> Yeah, so, yes, those dudes need to be put on blast. That's yeah, what at Bob259-2017-0005. Yeah, those are one blast. person, he's got like 25 followers. It's like, dude, come <laughs> on. Bro. I know you just made this account up. Like, give me a break. You know, yeah. so, yeah. So, that's what the Haters Club is. And you being the guest on here this week, we always allow our guests, if you have anyone, feel free to throw them out here. And it can be it can be a beat writer as well. Whatever the case is, it doesn't matter. There is no wow. one of the Haters Club. That's a tough one, man. Um, Nobody's off limits. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kim Jones has been thrown on that list. We don't give a fuck. Listen, I get thrown on twice. Listen, I would put Pat Leonard, but that that's too much of a that's too much of a, a softball pitch, right? That's that, an easy one. Bitch, right? <laughs> um, Nobody you know, likes um, that guy. No, he's, he's, the, he's the king hater, so he's got his spot locked. <laughs> Um, you know, just thinking of somebody off the head, uh, you know, I'm not going to call anybody out specifically. There's a few of you out there, though, that have no clue what you're talking about when it comes to football. Matter of fact, let's do this. The whole uh, Barkley brigade, brigade that can't get over him being drafted number two and we'll never let him live that down. And, you know, fuck him. You know, he's going to suck forever. We could have took Quentin Nelson. You know what? Look in the camera. Get out of the past. Get into the future. Stop sucking your thumb. You bark <laughs> season. Whether we pay him or somebody else pays him, shut the fuck up about all the shit from 2018. It's a new coach. It's a new GM. Uh, it's all new. Let the kid ball out. Stop hating on him. Stop putting comments in there. You know, uh, there's one guy out there. His name's Will or something like. That. You guys know no him. <laughs> Yeah, um, we nominated him about three weeks ago. We had him on as a special guest uh, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Right. So uh, I've talked to Will before. And, you know, I'm not the person. It's all, it's all sports for fun, man. But yeah, definitely. Biggest, yeah, the course. biggest Saquon hater, man. Of uh, course. Hated on Saquon's kids, his wedding, his fucking, his skin, <laughs> you pretty much name it. Um, but to all those Saquon haters, be careful because if he's healthy, we got our right tackle now. We got some new interior offensive linemen. We're going to use him out of the backfield as a receiver. We're going to get him on some wheel routes. We're going to put him in the slot. So get prepared to scrub those tweets there, Will. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Will and all you other Barkley haters. All of yeah. Them. I've gone at Will quite a few times <laughs> oh, yeah. in the past. And he's a good sport. Listen, guys, he's a good sport. Like I said, no, he is. Yeah, he is. Oh, he too. Listen, and, and he, that's why we like the like, haters when they come on. Yeah, come on. When these two, when these two were ganging up on him, and I like, I couldn't even grab his back anymore. He would sit there, take it, and then just come back with a nice rebuttal. <laughs> I'm like, all right, dude, all right, yeah, all right. It was, it was I'm gonna good. let you run. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, you don't, you don't have anybody this week. You be saying? No, nah, I was just thinking to myself, like, you know, Pat Leonard, like, he seems to me like he would be, like, the god of all the haters. Absolutely. Like, all the haters just, like, out. kind of worship him because he's the biggest dick. They go to but, him for uh, his direction. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Anybody ever tell you you look like Jeremy Shockey a little bit? Jeremy oh, Shockey? shit. We're going to run with that shit, the rest dude. of the year. That's a good, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Deja vu over here. I'm ready for you to throw a cup of ice into the fucking stands over here. Dude, I'm only about just, like – 
10 times less of a man compared to Shaggy. No, that, what are you like a that dude is a tank, <laughs> man. I remember, yo, I remember like how fucking gigantic he was. I'm like, we're going to have the best tight end for the next fucking 20 years. I know. Look at this stuff. fucking monster. You know what I mean? You if he like wore those old no? school fucking shoulder pads, he'd be a fucking beast. I love He's one of my favorite Shaggy. players, man. All time Giants. And listen, you know, I take a lot of shit on, on Twitter because I back, you know, I support Shockey. That was one of my all time favorite players. Listen, it may not have worked out ideally in, in a bubble how we would love it. Tough, strong, hard nose, um, played hurt all the time. You know, you know, people want to talk shit about the 2007 Super Bowl and say, well, you know, the Giants wouldn't have won without Shockey. Listen, that may be true. You know, maybe him going out, you know, set a different chemistry in place. I'm not saying it didn't because the results say it did, but. I love Jeremy Shockey, man. That was one of my favorite players of all time. Still is. I mean, did he did he knock out one of the linebackers his rookie year? It was like trying yeah. to haze him in a lunch yeah. room. Fucking knocked the dude out cold. I think like, it was Brandon <laughs> Short, if I remember correctly. Yeah, 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 that's right. right. I don't remember who it was that's at right. first. <laughs> the memory. Holy I mean, shit. Bro, Shout out, Shockey, man. Shout no, out Jeremy Shockey. Yeah, like, I need your normal rookie, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> also, when he was in Madden, he was one of the first players in Madden. He had the luscious locks, the blonde locks coming out of the helmet. That's I'm right. Like that. That's we right. Just, we just got joined uh, by John. John, what's oh, up, brother? Wow. Oh, cool. What's that? going on, guys? <laughs> Coming out of the haters club. club down over here. Yeah, yo, you got a time for the haters club. Perfect timing. <laughs> oh, what's up, John? My favorite part of the show. John, you know who he not? You know who Tommy nominated? He nominated all the Barkley haters and Will receipts. <laughs> wow, there you go. That was well, Will that was is the leader perfect. of the Barkley haters. So naturally. Will Will is definitely the god of the Barkley haters. Absolutely. for sure. <laughs> He's trying and to monetize then, hating Barkley. That's Pat Leonard <laughs> too. Pat Leonard too, John. That was everybody's favorite nominee. Was Pat Leonard? Well, Pat Leonard's whole brand is trying to just kind of get that negative attention from Giants fans, and unfortunately, it fucking works for him. It. Yeah, he gets it. Um, <laughs> got it from me. Who is, who, the, the, I mean, Pat Leonard from <laughs> South Jersey. I think he's an Eagles fan. So it makes sense for him to hate on the Giants from that standpoint. Will is a Giants fan, still fucking hates Saquon and pretty much everybody else that had anything to do with John Maher and Dave Gettleman. So <laughs> that's where it's a problem. <laughs> Pat Leonard, listen, I knew Pat he'd Leonard go, but I'll do a little careful, something there. <laughs> listen, Pat, Pat Leonard has like 29% of the fan base blocked right now. So he's cutting off his money. <laughs> I'm blocked too from him. Oh well, listen. You know what? That's been my goal. So I've been trying to get blocked by some of these big names, and I can't, man. Have. So like, one of the guys I'm throwing on that haters list, and you guys been waiting for it. It's been two weeks in the making here. Is Dan Dugan? Fuck wow. that guy, right? Like, bro, that guy talked so much shit, and it was yo, and I let a lot of it go, right? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> the Celtics lose. The Celtics. It's that a fucking different up, sport. And he tweets out, and I'm paraphrasing it, but it's going to be pretty damn close to what he tweeted. Basically, he tweets out, he goes, oh, now I know how Giants fans have felt after this loss from the Celtics. For and no I'm like, reason. what? For what no the reason. fuck are you talking about? Like, and that was it, bro. I have been nonstop at that motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, how do you call yourself a New York Giants beat writer when you're comparing the two? I think if you wanted to get, like, the, the New York mo emotional fan base, you could have easily have turned around and said, shit. Now I know what Rangers fans felt like after losing the fucking Tampa in, 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 the, in the Eastern Conference Finals, you know? Like, that makes a little more sense. They were in the fucking Celtics from the NBA Finals, and they lost to a better team. Like, big fucking deal. You're going to bring the Giants in? So, yeah, fuck him until he fixes that shit or, or actually talks good about the Giants. The dude shouldn't even be a fucking beat writer. Listen, like John said, John hit it right on the head. The, uh, him and Pat Leonard personify – any publicity is good publicity. So they don't give a shit. I can't stand half the beat writers. Though. I swear I can't stand half of them. There's a bunch of good ones out there. <laughs> really good. Uh, I like her a lot. She does a really good job. There's a few good Pat ones. Patrina? Yeah. Yeah, I like Patrina a lot too. She's she a legit a Giants job. fan. She grew up a Giants fan and treats them as a turd team that she's covering. Not that she's trying <laughs> to like make a name for herself in the sports world. Absolutely. Shout out to her. You know, I'm probably going to be working with her coming up soon. Uh, All right. She She's an amazing individual. She's kind of taken me under her wing, you know, the last few months. Um, she's just really a good person. She's smart. She's detailed. Her articles are on point. She's there with the team, obviously. And um, she's not giving you the controversial clickbait. You know, I'm going to either trash the team or make love a that. trade scenario uh, to get you to, get, you know, click on my stuff over here. Yep. That's what old school journalism was supposed to be about until like five, six years ago. It was supposed Absolutely. to be an unbiased 
take. You should present both sides of the argument and then the reader makes a decision on what they believe. Now it's just about clicks and about grabbing attention and shit. So respect Patty for that. Yeah, absolutely. There's a couple other ones too that are like that too. I don't want to just, you know, leave them off, but just specifically we're talking about Pat Trana, So I, I honestly uh, thought you I th- honestly thought you were gonna throw a couple out there that you can't stay because I know you got a good list. Oh uh, <laughs> Matt Lombardo. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what I ever did to him. Did he really Jordan Ron has fucking Matt, who? Oh, yeah, his yeah, moments? <laughs> what happened? No, because like I saw you pause for a minute, like it looked like you were gonna dive into that hard. And then you were like, oh Pat, oh Pat, who? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I like her content. Yeah, like, me too. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for the hammer. <laughs> no, no, I like that. Um, I was watching the Yankee game. They fucking uh just battled back. They were down five nothing, and uh now it's six five. Yankee. I need, so, I need uh, them to win by one and a half. <laughs> well, winning by one right now. Are we and... Yankees fans on here or Mets fans? Yes. Oh, they're winning by three now. Oh, so hell yeah. Say, yeah Chavis, we're, 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 you, you're, you're definitely surrounded by a bunch of Yankee fans. I don't know if you are or aren't, but that. Oh, that, I am, dude. You okay, all right, all right. All right. Aaron, <laughs> they, about now you can stay on. Judge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can stay on the podcast now. Yeah, Aaron Judge, man. In the beginning of the year, I'm not going to oh lie. God. I kind of was like, yeah, he, he should have took that money. He should have took dude. that money. I'm sorry, Aaron. I apologize because that dude's yeah. been oh, on fire. <laughs> How much shit did because we went to a game in April? So, how much shit was I giving Judge? Like, you should have heard we me. all were, dude. All I, of us. I was like the fucking biggest Judge hater. I was like, oh, fuck it. You, you could want to get paid that money. You just struck out. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was. Come on. We all were. And now we he's walking off the fucking Astros and shit. You're like, oh, that's like the third time he did that shit. <laughs> you know who's the worst is Gallo, man. I'm just going to oh say, my God, like, dude. You know, he's in eight, in 180 at bats, he struck out 82 times. So, he's terrible. <laughs> oh, that's a swing. Real? That is real. Like every game, he strikes out at least three times. It's, it's embarrassing. Brutal, dude. Bro, as you. an Italian man, it, it fucking hurts my heart to see that guy. Me struggle. too. Me too. <laughs> That's why we got Rizzo, though. No. Yeah. He fucking... <laughs> He's balancing it out a little bit. Right? 50 50. We hit, on, we hit half. I had Brett Gardner, and then, he, then they don't even want him back. I would, I would start Gardy over, over Gallo. Oh, for sure. And Hicks, too. I, oh, oh, yeah. Like, been playing every day. He's been playing a little bit better, though. I'm not, hey. He's been playing a little better. But yeah, Gallo, don't, like, you can't wake the he, fuck up. Gallo's looks, just kind of with that uppercut <laughs> swing, too. Like, what are you swinging at, bro? Like, you're not, like, come on, man. I, I don't, I just don't think he can handle New York. Like, some no, places just, just can't do it. You know, and this is from day one, man. This is from as soon as he got here. He's been yeah. in strikeouts since the day he got here. He can't handle New York, but wasn't he born here? <laughs> <laughs> that's why he left. Oh, bro. He's like, I, I, I did. Up. You know what I'm saying? It's like I can't handle it here. I'm moving. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was the case. I wish you'd be like, you know, I, I can't stand this place. I gotta, I gotta go. There's a reason the why I left. Right? To be named He's later. from Nevada. <laughs> oh, okay. From uh, Nevada. That makes sense. Well, he was born in Nevada. I should say. I don't know where he. Yeah, he, uh, he was born in Nevada. I don't know. Let's see. Where did he grow up? South Bronx. <laughs> 160th Street. Yeah, yeah. You go around the corner and shit. <laughs> I, I, personal life, I, I think he's just from Nevada. Yeah, he grew up in Las Vegas. And he played with uh, he played with Bryce Harper and Chris Bryant growing up. Oh, I thought I did read something squad. like that. Yeah, that's right. That's good oh, he's, he's fucking got, he's Sicilian got, too. He's got a career. His parents are born in fucking ben, grew up in Bensonhurst. This is fucking terrible. Gallo, yeah, just we close that, John. Fucking Michael Jordan zero. <laughs> just close that out, John. <laughs> yeah, Gallo got to go away. Hey, so don't Eddie, do it to get, yourself. Don't do it to yourself. Get, get it back to the Giants. I don't know how we uh, went off on this Yankee. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, could, I, I was, was going to say, hey, 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 any, any more hated nominations? John, do you have one for us? No, man. My life's been so yeah, the, good since the Houston fucking... Astros. Sorry, John. <laughs> yeah, Houston Astros. Exactly. <laughs> they really bro, I was fucking get. Yankees getting no hit yesterday, bro. Yeah. I no. came out of days ago. That was ridiculous. And then, like, the whole first half of the first game, so it was, like... Yeah, like, 15 innings. Like, 24 games, 24, it was, like, 15, yeah, whatever. For 15 15 innings, I watched them suck. (laughs) I'm like, somebody get a hit. They went to sleep. (laughs) (laughs) And, yo, guys, did I already throw Mika Parsons out there on the Haters Club? Because I just want to throw him out there, guy. I don't give a fuck how big he is. Yeah, you went after him quite a bit. (laughs) Oh, fuck him, man. Ever since, yo, I don't know if you guys saw that tweet that was out there where where he was, like, commenting where, you know, like, of course... There's that Madden preview and one Jones of the fumbling. Is fucking Jones fumbling yep. to Dallas, right? Yep. She's like, yo, that's the best Madden ever. 
I'm like, yo, this guy just like he just talks mad shit about the Giants. Like, first of all, we we didn't pass on you, we traded back. All right. So, like, right. like we, it's not like we we picked someone else when we could have picked him. So there's no reason to have that much hatred towards the fucking Giants. And this guy, like, he, he had a great year year. He really did. But to me, he kind of lives in this world where he already thinks he's like fucking Ray Lewis or something. Because like he's saying that this year and year two, he's gonna break the sack record. Right, so you know he already got caught up with that 9/11 with the jerseys last year. Mm-hmm. The fuck now that's a guy that was you know had a little bit of a bad rap with shit that had gone down in Penn State, and it followed with him, and that's probably why he fell out of the top ten in the draft. And you know that's a guy that you see his character carry through, and you know they don't discipline that shit in the Cowboys. They let you do whatever the fuck you want in Dallas. He's so like you could that. see it come out. Whereas with Thibs, and we mentioned this earlier, I don't see that. I don't see Thibs coming out who's already got New York by the grasp. His jersey, I think, might be the best-selling jersey right now for the fucking Giants. And you don't hear a peep out of the fucking dude. Jay said it was top 10. His jersey was top 10 in NFL sales uh, in the UK. when they, Wow. He was like seven or eight. Obviously, we had to get, you know, game in London coming up. Uh, but when you talk about Parsons, you know what else sucks about that? The fucking Cowboys fans are putting a battery in this kid's back. Way too soon with the he's better than Lawrence Taylor. Uh, uh, crazy. Those tweets you always see greater than Lawrence Taylor. I don't want to hear shit about nobody being better than Lawrence Taylor. And you know what? They're jinxing that kid by putting that stuff out there. You don't put that stuff out there in the guy's second year. You don't, you know, I'm a big, you know, I'm Italian. I'm a big Molly Lloyd, you know, jinx type of guy. They're jinxing that kid, man. And watch it. Don't turn sideways on them. You know what? If I met like Lawrence Taylor and I met God, I would tell God Lawrence Taylor is better than you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like LT, nobody could get in. You can't even compare him, man, to anybody ever. No, what he did was just absolutely ridiculous. I've never seen a human cause such a ruckus on defense before. I was like, because I was growing up as a kid watching him play. I'm like, this is normal, right? This is how it's supposed to be here in New York. I mean, I wish I appreciated him more because that dude was right. just unbelievable, man. Yeah, it's yeah, true. The one thing about my Giants fandom that I hate, that I shouldn't say I hate, but um, I just I was just a little too young. I didn't get to see him play. I didn't get to see him play. All I got is highlights. I missed him by a couple of years. Same, and that's, no, not just you. Same. And that's what it is. You know, that that's what, you know, like you mentioned it earlier with the Twitter world being a lot younger of a crowd. And, and that's what the majority, they missed all that shit. They don't even, if we barely saw it, these younger guys in their 20s have no clue about Lawrence Taylor. They see a different game. They see they they don't know what was like revolutionized. They don't. They need to be reminded of it, especially when no matter what, every generation is going to have the greatest player of, of their generation, right? So now these guys are seeing the tail end of Tom Brady, right? So you know there is no more conversation that you could be like, well, who is it, Montana or Bradshaw? Nope, that's it. It's Brady. So they're like, oh, well, that means all these other guys are like this shit now. You know what I mean? Like. These guys in the past, they don't count no more. Like, I didn't see them play, so it doesn't matter, you know? And I think that's where a lot of people kind of forget a little bit about Lawrence Taylor. I mean, shit, there's not even that many Ray Lewis people that will go out there and talk about it. Ray Lewis just retired a few years ago, like, you know? So, like, it's like a quick mind that they forget about a lot of this. Well, we used to say that shit last year about the fucking memories fans of the goldfish. The fans that never did goldfish. That was was a topic. guys. I yeah. put out a tweet yesterday after Judge hit the, the walk-off home run. I put out a, t- a poll, right? I put Aaron Judge, Mickey Mantle, and Big Ruth. But I didn't put any words. I didn't say who's better, this, this. I put nothing. I just put the poll and then, uh, you know, Rep BX. They picked Aaron Judge. <laughs> Big fucking Aaron Judge. Like, that shows you how what Twitter – I mean, come on now. Right. That shows you what Twitter's about. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, you, you, literally, you literally just made me no think way. of what you say a lot. The salt in a swat? <laughs> yeah, who's this Babe Ruth guy? <laughs> Holy shit. That's fucking great, man. Yeah, that's that's where we are. That's Young where we are right now. It's scary but great all at the same yeah. time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, listen, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be getting a Tibbs jersey, and meanwhile, I'm like 10 years older than him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 was like, <laughs> it's crazy. Only man. time man, I, I, I didn't even think of that. You had to bring that shit up now. I go oh, giant. Like, I, yeah, I get an old Tulare jersey. Dude's like fucking half my age. Like, fuck. <laughs> That's why I still wear my Phil Sims jerseys, man. <laughs> to keep it real. <laughs> Where's my Eli jersey? I'm bringing that shit out. That's oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. damn right. 
<laughs> That's the good thing about the being a fan of a team like the Giants or the Yankees too, obviously more so. But there's players that you could wear their jerseys forever and it doesn't matter like Don just icons and that's it period stop. Paul O'Neill. absolutely you know? yeah absolutely. Eve Sachs if you're a Jets fan <laughs> like whose jersey are you really gonna wear you know you wear Joe Namich jersey from fucking 100 years ago like who's Jesus. who's their Eli Manning who's their Michael Strahan the yeah, Rams. fuck the Jets yeah <laughs> <laughs> fuck the Jets we don't like the Jets over here either yeah, fuck uh, the Jets stop we, we using don't mind them. it's just that you know, like I, I think we're, we're, we're the frustration is really coming out with the, with the Jets is that now the the comparisons of being so bad have gotten to the point where us and the Jets are the worst teams over the last five years. So like when you hear that, you kind of get that in your head. We're like, wait a minute, no, 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 we're light years ahead of the Jets. Like they suck. Get the fuck out of here. Like I don't even want to hear this shit. They haven't won anything in fucking forever. Like fuck it's sad, bro. It's a sad comparison, man. I hate seeing that. I, I yeah. hate- pops up also two of the top five most injured teams through the last 10 years coincidentally two of the, the top most injured teams yeah uh, listen, we, we've had dumb. many episodes regarding injuries all right so that, that that's a, a little sub topic right there when nobody's like wait i think we gotta wrap this show up that's a whole show that's a whole show right there right. On injuries. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, we've probably had about four of them already <laughs> we got we gotta wrap this show up jules <laughs> we can't yeah. go down that rabbit hole yeah 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 no forget it. We'll, we'll be out we'll be out till midnight but uh <laughs> <laughs> real but listen, Tommy, man, I wanted to give you a quick shout out again. You know, listen, thank you for joining us. And, you know, tell, tell the guys, you know, do you have any idea what the show's going to be called yet or, or when it's still in development? What, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, so it's still in development, still playing around with some things, still doing some demos, working around with some of, with some of the uh, artwork and everything. Uh, it's going to be my own podcast. Um, you know, it's going to be under an umbrella. As it gets closer, you know, I'll talk, I'll talk a little bit more about it. Uh, awesome. I don't want to, I want to get it a little more concrete before I get into details. You know, maybe I could even come back on the show when I got everything ironed out. I had a, I had a fucking blast with you guys tonight, for real. Likewise, dude, definitely. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah, let's do that then. We'll stay in touch, you know what I'm saying? Let me know when you, when you do have it. Definitely come on the show, you know, maybe we'll get you on like right, like a couple weeks before the season starts and we'll, we'll just kind of fire yeah, away. you guys come on my thing too. We'll do some cross Absolutely. platform. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Definitely. Fact, we're yeah. good. We're all Italian, right? Yeah. Well, we got to train these Irish, but that's right. He, 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 he can hang out with us. Yeah, <laughs> I can go. Like you still might be. Right, right. I've yeah. had Italian food, so. Yeah. <laughs> that counts, man. Yeah, that's some of the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, good luck, Tommy, on your adventures, yeah. man. Hopefully uh, you get everything up. straight, man. It'll definitely work Appreciate out for it. Oh, well, we got 44 it. days to oh, preseason kickoff. Here we go. Just the countdown. All right, that's the countdown days. for the countdown. So that's it. You know where to find this. We'll be back next week. We might even have another guest on. Who knows? It's definitely guest season for the next few weeks. That's for damn sure. But that wraps up another episode of BBONYG. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you later. Peace out. Peace. Peace.